Hi, my name is Michael. I'm a customer success manager here at UserLike, and I'm going to give you a brief introduction to our chat solution. First off, you're going to go to our website at userlike.com and log in. After logging in, you're going to go to our dashboard. Once you're logged in, you're going to head into your dashboard. On the dashboard, you can see everything available to you, including different configurations, as well as in the upper right, you can see your profile. Once selecting that, you can see your options to change your profile, change a password, tell a friend, mute all notifications, or just log out. Starting off, though, we're going to go to the chat panel. The chat panel is where your operators spend most of their time, and it's the front line for all live chat. Now that we're in the chat panel, you can see on the left you have a roster. You can see all your operators that are currently online, and then any web visitors that come in with a live chat will also appear here. Right now we're set to away, which we can see in three different locations, so you don't have any confusion that you're currently away and won't receive any chats. Before we get started, we have set ourselves to active. You can also see here now in these three locations that you're online and you will receive chats. So let's start a chat. So all you have to do to start a chat is click on the chat button. Once the customer clicks on the chat button, they'll be connected to somebody in the chat panel. So we start off by saying hello. You can see here that the chat has arrived and the message that the customer sends in the chat panel. We can simply respond just in kind. And you can see here that the chats are in different colors. The message here from the customer is in green, and then the chat from the operator is in blue. This appears just the same way in the chat window the customer has. They also have emotes in case they want to send a little motion behind it, like if they're pleased with the service, for instance. Back in the chat panel, we can see some different information from the customer. On the right here, we can see we're talking to Tamina. You can see that she works here at UserLike, but also that she has an account at LinkedIn and at Twitter. You can see which widget it came from, the language of the chat. You can also see the page that she's on, including the URL. You see the status here, how many times she's visited us in the chat panel. You can see the topic of the chat and which browser and operating system she's using. Below, we also have the option, if you have Help Scout enabled, to see how many Help Scout conversations she has and any URL she's visited. At the very bottom of the page, you can see any custom data that you've asked for, also any previous chats and offline messages that Tamina's had with us. At the top, we have our different options, such as the macros. Chat macros, to start off, uh, allow you to send a message you might use over and over again in case you have to retype something that you commonly use. So if we just want to say hello quickly, we can click on one of our add-ons and it'll send a greeting that you want your customers to always receive. We also have the option to send a customer to another URL using a push macro. If we want to send them to a page that you know your customers need, uh, for instance, a certain product that's very popular, you can send them there. We also have the option to send them a download macro. A download macro is basically a way to send them a file or document or even an image that you want your customer to receive. Next up, we have add-ons. Under the add-ons menu, you can see the add-ons that you have set up. In case you wanna follow up with a customer as a lead or if this is a support ticket that a customer has an issue with that needs a little following up on, you can use a uh, macro such as GitHub or we can use something like pipe drive or pipeline deals if it's a lead that we want your sales team to follow up on. Under the actions menu, we have different options such as request a screenshot. You can forward the conversation to anybody else in the same group or another group. We can also set the chat topic if this is a lead uh, or if it's a question or if this is, happens to be a support related question, we can do that. We can also set the status. As the message comes in, it'll be a new message. We can change it to an open status, pending, closed, or we can create new statuses. Uh, there's option as well, in case the chat comes in and it's not actually in American English and they've just come in in the American widget, we can change the language to any of our languages that we provide from anywhere from Chinese, Danish, German, etc. If the customer is abusive, we can also block them via cookies. And then also if the session is over and they're completed the request, you can quit the session. Now that we're done with our chat, let's head over to My Chats. Under My Chats, you can see all conversations you've had in the chat panel. You can go in and see the topic and the full chat transcript. 
Once we get into the message, we can edit the topic and the status of the message. Under settings, we can actually set a few different things here to make the chat exactly what we want it to appear as. If we need certain notifications set, we can set all the notifications we find important and we need a little extra notification for. So if I have, uh, so if I think it's important that we see that a message is sent or that we receive a new chat session, I can enable these and nothing else. And also we have the option at the bottom for audio notifications in case we need more than just a visual cue to see when a chat comes in or when an operator comes online. Now that we're done with the chat panel, we just head over to our profile in the upper right and click on leave chat panel. Now that we're back on the dashboard, we see the options available to us. As an owner, you can go under company, change your company settings, your organization settings, and also see your API key here. Under product, if you want to upgrade or view the current status of your subscription, click on these options. Configs, where we're gonna be spending most of our time, so we click on config and then widgets. We're gonna be using the widget we've been working with. Under the general tab, you can change the name and the language, or even set a topic for the widget. The appearance tab gives you a few different options, such as several themes that we offer, anything from our default widget to neutral, spring, summer colors, things like this. These are a great way to get a unique feel for your widget because you've spent so much time on your website making it exactly what you wanted it appear to your customers, and so your widget should be exactly the same. Once you select one of these options, use it as a starting off point. You have these different col colors available to you. Now you can go through, select your main color, your background color, things like this, make the changes, get it exactly what you want it to be. Further down, we can change the button position to the right or left. And if you have a certain certificate you need on your site, you might use our button, our button offset to put it exactly where you need it on the right or left so it's not hiding the certificate. We offer button styles, different icons. You can also change the text. At the very bottom, we have our eye catcher feature. The eye catcher feature allows you to grab the, your customer's attention just in case they need that little extra hint that you're online and able to chat with them. The wording tab is also nice. If you happen to have a certain message you want sent to your customer, a certain feeling you want them to receive, you can change every bit of text in your widget. You can also put an entirely new language if we don't offer it. Next up to chat behavior. Under chat behavior, we offer different modes for chat. Our normal chat mode allows the customer to simply click on the button and get to a chat. However, if you need some more information from the customer, for example, you want to get their phone number, email, account name, etc., you can select the registration chat mode to get all of this information before they go into the chat. The proactive chat allows you to set a timeout, and after the timeout, the customer's receiving an offer that allows them to accept a chat offer in case you want to let them know we're here for you or you want to be a little more proactive and aggressive with your sales team. The proactive and registration mode are a combination of these last two. We also allow you to hide the chat button if you're offline or outside of your service times. If your chat service times are enabled here, you can select the days and times that you're available for chat. And if you're not available on the weekends, for example, you can also disable just Saturday and Sunday and you don't have to worry about receiving chats during these times. During your service times, you can enable show chat butler. Once chat butler is enabled, you can select a name for your chat butler that the customer sees. You can change the picture of chat butler and also set the timeout for chat butler. If your customer comes into the chat, and you're not available, Chat Butler steps in and gathers the customer's requests and information. And if you're available within the timeout, you'll receive the chat. If not, you'll get an offline message with the customer request. Further down, we have the option to enable screenshots for you or your uh, customers. You can also use our tracking options in case you do have an account for Google Analytics or Kissmetrics. The inactivity options allow you to decide how to behave if your chat is a little busy and then your operator is not responding within a certain time frame. If you want to end the chat, forward the chat, or just send them a reminder that you're there, but it's taking a little longer. Our privacy options are very important for us at UserLike, and security is very important as well. 
So if you don't want to gather certain data from your customers and you want to keep things uh, very secure, this is where you can decide not to gather personal data and also give them a disclaimer if needed. Under chat routing, we have different options available. Starting off, we have our default mode. This is just a simple group selection. This way, if your group, somebody from your group is online, your chat comes online and people can reach your operators. If you select group select, your customer can select exactly who they want to talk to. This way, if you have a support team, a sales team, and if you have a group that speaks a certain language only, your customer can get to exactly who they need to talk to. Lastly, we have skill-based routing. If this is enabled, you can select different skill sets for this widget. So if you have a sales team that speaks English and you have an operator with these skills, your widget will come online and your customer will speak exactly to who they need to. Under the feedback tab, we have survey options for pre and post chat surveys. So if you want to ask a certain question to your customer and get some specific answers, or you want to find out what common reasons are using the chat, you can gather this information. We also offer a feedback and rating option. So as the company owner, you might be interested to know how your chat's doing and how your operators are handling each chat. The social uh, tab allows you to connect your Facebook and Twitter accounts. And then under notifications, this is where you can enable different email notifications and also decide if you want only these offline and chat transcripts to go to your group only. This is where also you can disable your browser notifications and your connection to your add-ons in case you want to disable this for this widget alone. Under the install tab, this is where you can find your widget code. All you have to do is copy and paste it just before the last body tag in your website. It's as simple as that. Copy, paste, and you're good to go. We also have the option here under credentials for applications in case you're using one of our add-ons that require the secret for your widget. Now that we're done with the widget configuration, let's head down to roles. Under the roles option, you can see every role available to all of your operators. This way you can set a role for different operators so they get the freedom that you want them to have. You can choose the rights for messages, analytics, or if you want them to have the power to change different things like your organizations and the company itself. We'll head over to operators now. If you select an operator, You'll see that you can change the profile picture, the name, or set an alias if you don't want their full name to be available to your customers, change their email address, set a language, their time zone, and then set the role we just discussed as well. This is also where you'll set the group for the operator. Skills, this is where we'll get involved with our skill-based routing. This is where you can set the individual skills that go into the skill sets that you set for your widget. These are the notifications under the Notifications tab that you saw within the chat panel. Under the Audio tab, you'll have the same audio options that we saw in the chat panel as well. The Chat Panel tab here is a little different. While we can still change the notification messages that we could in the chat panel, this is where we also set the chat slots. Right now, we have it set to 10 chat slots. However, we recommend starting off with three so your operators aren't overwhelmed. The present tab is nice if your operator happens to step away from the computer but forget to log out. If you're receiving messages, you don't want your customers wondering why they aren't getting responses. Customers expect to receive a response in less than a minute, so if they're waiting for several, that's pretty bad. So here, just click on Reset Presence, and you don't have to worry about that anymore. Lastly, under the Password tab, you can simply assign a new password for your operator in case they forget that. We'll go to add-on settings now. Here you can see all of the add-ons available to you. If you want to activate one or edit one, just simply click on the edit icon here. Here you can see the uh, settings required to you, and every add-on has a tutorial available as well. Just select that, and you'll see exactly how to set that up. After discussing skills, we'll head over to the skills option. You can see here all the skills we currently have set up. To add a skill, simply click on add skill, Give it a name and a description and click on create skill again, and this will be available to all of your operators. Now to the topic of macros. If we select chat macros, we can see all the macros available to us in the chat panel. To add one, click on add macro. Give your macro a name, the text you want, and if you want a shortcut enabled. And then lastly, set a macro group. After setting the macro group, click on Create Macro, and it will be available in that group within the chat panel. 
This goes the same exactly for our push and download macros. If you want to see a previous chat or offline message, simply click on one of these options under the Messages menu. Once we're in the Messages menu, we can select one of the transcripts, change the status, the topic, or create a ticket for any of the add-ons we have set up. Last up, we'll cover analytics. As the company owner, you probably think it's important to know that your chats are doing well and your operators are handling them correctly. So we can go under quality. Under quality, we can see the very, uh, some very important things such as first response time. This lets us know how long your operator took to respond to a chat first off. Then you can see how long it takes them to respond on average. We can see any unanswered chats they've had and plus see any satisfaction ratings and feedbacks for their chats as well. We offer different things as well, such as missed opportunities in case you need to staff your chat in times you didn't really know about. Or under operator timelines, for instance, you can see when your operators were online, when they were away, when they were busy. If you want to create your own dashboard, click on dashboards. Click on edit dashboards, and then click on add dashboard. After doing this, we can add any KPIs we find to be important for us. So if we want to say we want to see our total chats, we can add this KPI. And we want to know perhaps how long it took our operators to respond, we can select a response times KPI. After saving this, we can simply go to dashboards and this will appear in the dashboards for us to take a look at. That's it for our introduction to UserLike. Should you have any further questions, take a look at our tutorials page here. Also feel free to contact us at support at userlike.com or find us in our live chat on our website. Thank you so much for listening and happy chatting.